Hello, math application students, and welcome to your online lesson. Today, we'll be solving equations with rational exponents. A reminder, when we say rational, we are talking about fractions with a numerator and a denominator. And we'll be using those exponents to undo operations, much like we would use subtraction to undo addition in a problem or division to undo multiplication. Well, today, we're going to be using our rational exponents to undo operations while solving equations that contain rational exponents, meaning exponents. We'll know we're successful when we can efficiently solve IB level problems involving equations with rational exponents. So we're going to start off with an equation that actually has no exponents, but it does have something that's rational. It has this fraction out front here, 2 thirds x. And our goal is to solve this equation. And as we know, when we're trying to solve an equation, we're trying to get our variable, in this case x, all alone. Well, there's two terms on the left side of the equation. The first one has an x in it. The second one doesn't. So let's get rid of that second term, which is the positive 5. Again, opposite operations. We're subtracting 5 from both sides here. We now have 2 thirds x equals 4. Now, we're trying to get this x alone, and we've got this 2 thirds here. Well, if the 2 thirds is multiplying the x, it would make sense to then divide. But as I show my work here dividing, I end up with this double or triple decker fraction that's going on here on the two sides. And you might be saying, well, how do I even do this? What's actually getting divided here? And of course, we could reach for a calculator with some carefully placed parentheses and solve it that way. But we didn't actually learn how to solve equations by dividing fractions. Instead, what we learned is that anytime we have a fraction coefficient that we want to get rid of, rather than dividing, we multiply, but we multiply the reciprocal. So on the left side here, to get rid of the 2 thirds, I'm going to multiply by 3 halves. So again, I just flipped that fraction. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. These will cancel out or become 1, leaving just x on the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equation, now we still have to multiply this nice whole number here with our fraction or ratio of 3 halves. But we can just put the 4 over 1 since the whole number. Multiply straight across. 4 times 3 gives us 12. 1 times 2 gives us 2. So we end up with x equals 6. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to apply some of these ideas of using reciprocals with rational numbers to some problems that actually have exponents. So... Looking at this problem, how do we solve the following equation? Again, we have two terms on the left side, uh, equaling a, a whole number on the right. But on the left side, we do have a variable with an exponent. Like the last example, we want to get rid of the second term, which was the plus 7 in this case. So we're going to subtract 7 from both sides. So now I have x to the third is equal to 27. Now the question might be, how do we get rid of this third exponent? Or maybe you're saying to yourself, I know how to get rid of a third power. Well, if we we're getting rid of a squared, we'd square root. So here, we're simply going to cube root. And if you thought that, you wouldn't be wrong. That's exactly what you could do. We could cube root this. Um, the cube root of a cube will cancel each other out. So on the left side, we are just left with x. But then the question is, what happens on the right side? Now, this is a pretty easy cube root. You can probably guess and check it, or maybe you even have this one memorized. But as we get to larger numbers, people might be struggling to come up with a cube root. And so as often as the case, when we're struggling to come up with some mental math, we reach for our calculator. However, how do we put the cube root of 27 into the calculator? You might say, well, there's a square root button right here square root 27, but that's not the same thing that we're doing here. We're trying to find out what number can multiply by itself again and then again uh, to get our 27, not just multiplying two of those numbers together to get that or squaring it. So there technically is a menu that allows you to get to a cube root, and that is the math button that we have right here. So you can click on that math button, and you'll notice option number four is a cube root. And then actually option five allows you to do other roots um, where you sort of plug those in. However, there's a good chance that you wouldn't remember which menu to go to. Further, it's anytime I have to use a calculator and I'm reaching into a menu, 
it seems like a lot more work than something I want to do. Plus, our whole goal was to be able to use exponents today to solve rational um, or equations with rational exponents. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a totally different way to solve this problem. So going back to our first step that we had here, we're still going to get rid of the 7, leaving x to the third equals 27. But now what we're going to do, rather than um, do a cube root, we are going to just do another exponent. And like we did on that previous algebra problem where we multiplied the 2 thirds reciprocal, we're going to do the reciprocal exponent. Now, what is our exponent that we currently have? It's a third power. What's the reciprocal? Well, just remember that 3 is a whole number, and any whole number you can just write over 1. So the reciprocal would be 1 over 3. So I've got x to the third. I'm going to take it to the 1 third power. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now, as we know, when you have a power of a power, for example, if I had x to the second raised to the third power, I don't add those exponents. I multiply them. So I would end up with x to the sixth. Well, multiplying is what we did on that previous example. So if I have 3 over 1, then 1 over 3, those cancel out or become 3 over 3, which is just 1, leaving just a single x, which is what our goal is. And now on the right side, we have 27 to the 1 third power, which from our previous unit we know is a cube root, but it's easier to put it in the calculator now. And so I'm going to pull up the calculator again here. And we can see that just using the regular old menu, I can just start with the 27, the base that we have here, and just take it to the power of 1 third. And that gives me my answer of 3. Now, for anyone who's saying, I knew this was 3 all along, this was a pretty easy one. Absolutely, this was a pretty easy one. As the numbers get harder, they don't come out to whole numbers, they become more advanced, uh, bigger values, then you might not be able to do it in your head. And this is a quick and easy way to get rid of exponents. All right, let's try another example. So on this one, we have two equations that we're going to go through. The first one says 7 equals r to the 1 half power. Now, you may remember that 1 half power means square root. So we're undoing a square root. But you don't need to remember that in order to do this problem. The idea is we already have our variable essentially alone here, or at least the term with the variable in it is alone. We just need to get rid of that exponent. So we do the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 1 half? Well, if we flip it, it becomes 2 over 1, also known as 2. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So these will cancel out. And on the other side, I have 7 squared, which is 49. So 49 equals r. No calculator even needed, as long as we know our basic math facts on that one. Moving to part b. Part b, you'll notice that the term with our rational exponent is not alone. So first step, let's get rid of this 3 from both sides. So 5 minus 3 gives us 2. Bring down our equal sign. And then we have 4 times a to the negative 1, 6. Well, now we do have our term with our um, rational exponent alone. But it still has a coefficient that we can get rid of using traditional uh, division here. So now I have a to the negative 1 sixth is equal to 2 fourths. We could reduce that to 1 half. It doesn't really matter because it's not a final answer or anything like that. Well, negative 1 sixth, how do we get rid of it? Same way we've been doing it on the last couple examples. We're going to do a power of a power, except we're going to do the reciprocal. Well, what's the reciprocal of negative 1 sixth? It still has to be negative, but we flip the 1 6, becomes 6 over 1, also known as 6, but it's still a negative. Let me clean that up a little bit. Also, I want to make sure that we're thinking about this as not like minus 6. Um, so if you want to put like a parenthesis or something around that, that would be absolutely fine. Um, it's sort of weird to see that. But again, we want to show that it's a power of negative 6 as opposed to like we're subtracting an exponent or something weird like that. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side as well. Oops, sorry, I wrote the wrong one. We want to have negative 6. 
All right, so these guys cancel out, leaving just A. So we know that A is equal to, and then over here on the left side, we want to do uh, one half to the negative six. Now from our previous unit, we should be able to do this without a calculator, though we can check our work on the calculator. Think about the negative exponent. What does a negative exponent do? It does a reciprocal. So I'm just gonna show my work up here. I have one half to the negative six power. The negative exponent means do the reciprocal. So this is the same thing as two to the six power. And two to the six power is one that we could probably do pretty easily in our head. Two times two would be four times another two would get us to eight, 16, 32, and then 64. So we end up with one half to the negative six power. And I really should have parentheses around this whole thing because we don't want it to look like it's just the one that's getting the negative six power, but the one half, all right? Let's check this on the calculator. Again, one half to the negative six power, just to show anyone who is having trouble with that algebra following it along. So if I pull this up here, I've got, again, one half to the negative six power. And again, we get that 64. All right, we're gonna do one last example. We wanna solve the following equation. Now this one's actually got some roots in a traditional cube root form written there. Um, so what I might suggest doing to start with is let's just make this a rational exponent. So the seven was the first term, plus five being our coefficient, no exponent or root involved in that. But that five is multiplying this group, which is two x. The two x has a power of two, but a root of three. Well, our powers or exponents go in the top and our roots go in the bottom. So now we have a rational exponent. So seven plus five, times the quantity 2x to the power of 2 thirds, and all that equals 47. We're trying to get the term with x all alone, so the first step is let's get rid of the 7 that's just hanging out here on the left. So now we have 5 times 2x to the 2 thirds power equals 40. Now we're going to divide both sides by 5. And 40 divided by 5 would give us 8. So we have 8 on the right side. On the left side, we have 2x to the 2 thirds power. Now, you may notice there's two values in here. There's a 2 times an x inside that group, all getting raised to the 2 thirds power. But that's as much as we can do before needing to get inside that group. So now would be a great time to get rid of that 2 thirds exponent. Once again, we take all of that to the reciprocal power, 3 halves. Do the same thing to the other side, three halves. These all cancel out, leaving just two x on the left side. But the right side, we have eight to the three halves power. Now it's nice to be able to like square root, which is really what that two, we have a second root or a square root going on there, but I don't know the square root of eight. So we could take eight times eight times eight, which would be our third power, but either way, it feels like we probably wanna reach for our calculator at this point. So I'm gonna pull that up. And so we've got eight to the three halves power, which gives us this pretty ugly number of 22.62. So we'll probably be doing some rounding on this one. So I've got 22.62. Now, since it's not my final answer, I'd like to not round it yet. But if I do at least a couple significant figures here, six to seven, or I could even put like a dot, dot, dot on this to show that I'm using the exact value here. Now, looking at my work on the board here, I still have to get X all alone. And what's keeping X from being alone? This two. So let's divide both sides by a two. And on the calculator, I don't even have to clear my screen. I can just uh, hit divide by two. So it's taking that answer and dividing it by two and then I've got this answer of 11.3137085 on and on. We're gonna to round to three significant figures here, so we'd have 11.3 as our final answer. All right, and that's how we can use rational exponents to solve equations with rational exponents. Till next time.